should have coffee follow Tom and the and symbol. Like, sorry, just follow you and hummus, like being pushed by my chest or something, and then just coffee and hummus. And Welcome to the first edition of coffee and hummus. So the concept is pretty easy. We eat hummus, we drink coffee, and we chat. So, we have been buying and eating hummus. This is great, isn't it? <laughs> um, how long, how long, how long, tell me? It's gotta be, what, we've come up to two years now? Two years. I was gonna say at least a year, probably two. I think as we've tried throughout time to sort of have some sort of system in place, Thursday was our coffee, well, just our hummus day, wasn't it, really? Yeah. It's always a coffee day. It's always a coffee day. We've got um, the farm shop down the road, we like to support, so we get down there, we buy our hummus, we buy our bread, and generally we just sit around, eat it, and chat. So we thought it'd be a good idea to share that with the world for some reason. Should I check on that? Should I open the door, the upstairs door? Who is it? Yeah, go and on, go on have a check. Pulled up in a giant truck with a, basically a tail lift, giant pallet truck. Trip tray. Yeah, drop this off. <laughs> Trip tray. So, coffee we are drinking is... It's Rwanda, isn't it? Rwandan... It's what? a natural Rwandan from Huye Mountain. Oh, cool. Natural Rwandan from Huye Mountain. Cafetiere, as always. Um, hummus, we've gone for caramelised onion hummus. Mm -hmm. From the Little Herb Farm. Um, who I've just seen on the back of there. Made in Scotland. Ah, nice. Just like me. <laughs> and... Um, is that uh, conceived or born? <laughs> just born. No, both actually. <laughs> Should we cut that out? No, no, let's keep, <laughs> let's keep that in. Nothing's off limits. Um, so, first question, just to kick it off. I'm going to throw this one to Tom okay. to get us started. Yeah. Um, you're invited to a party and you have to bring one thing to that party. What are you going with? Be careful because this can say a lot about a person. <laughs> Anything. It depends on the party. Probably wine. Probably a decent bottle of wine. Yeah, that's safe. Something slightly better than what you'd usually buy for yourself, maybe. <laughs> what kind of wine? Come on, give us a, give us some specifics. Is that, is that the... I don't know. I've mixed them up. I don't know. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Maybe just a good New Zealand Sauvignon. Or a Suave. Something like that. Suave, right. Tell me about a Suave. Suave is... I think it's normal Italian. And, and we had it? some really good ones last time I was in it. And it's like three quid a bottle. Why? It's just yeah, and it's just really good. It's quite dry. Cool. Quite sort of well balanced. Like me. Just really nice. Dry and well. Dry. <laughs> dry and well balanced. Um, that's, that's a safe one. Yeah. What do you I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear what Sneed. <laughs> what Sneed? We should have introduced ourselves really. Yeah. But anyway, Sneed, come on. What would you take to the party? Board game. Some board some game. form of yes. like. Interactive thing like Cards Against Humanity, something that just gets people laughing and riled up. Yeah, so to give you a bit of background on, on Guy, he loves board games and he's been trying to get us over to Bedford Street to our coffee shop to play... What's it called? Secret Hitler. Hitler. <laughs> Secret Hitler. Um, I'm just get that there. Trying to... Avoid that as much as possible. Yeah, so, totally. Um, to be fair, you've been avoiding Secret Hitler for as long as we've been eating bread and hummus. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Um, what would I bring to the party? Probably say, I don't want to hang out with you guys. I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, I don't party a lot anymore. Um, and in my old age, I'm probably starting to go less and less frequently to parties. I've recently been digging the, the Rieslings, Rieslings? Riesling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. German. I'm sure when I went wine tasting the first time, the one I told you about, mm. there was a New Zealand Riesling, Riesling mm. as well. Because the, the, old, the old world, which is like Europe, mm -hmm. the German one was, was really like herby and mm. like really acidic. And the one in, from New Zealand, New World, was like really sort of crisp and, and dry and sort of just really nicely well balanced. I think there's a lot to be said for wine tasting. You guys have, have both done it fairly recently, haven't you? I think if you're in coffee, mm. it's, yeah, it's really there's, a, there's a hell of a lot of parallels. The, the comparison between yeah, the two. 
Oh, I mean, when we're talking, I'm not. Mm. Mm. So, the one Yorkshire Wine School, who do it in like the northeast a lot, they did it with cheese, and that was excellent. So, it was like mm. cheese paired with wine, drink and eat the cheese, see what it does to the taste. It was, a, yeah. It was Pairing good. the cheese with the wine? Yeah, yeah. She, she specifically bought cheeses that would taste different after you drank the wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a very, very good one. I know, and like we were saying downstairs, like tasting coffee every single day. I do that with every single food mm -hmm. stuff now. Like I can't mm -hmm. help myself, and it almost it almost puts me off. Not eating in general, obviously, so I need to stay alive. But it annoys me sometimes that I'm I'm over analysing everything. So do you I put eat. more or less effort into your food? Like, do you try and make it absolutely exceptional, or do you just go, I'm never going to be happy, so I'm just going to just chuck anything together? Mm. I think the fact of I'm never, never going to be happy with what's in front of me because I can't stop critically analysing it I, every bit. Yeah, I, I, I do that a lot, but like... I kind of miss drinking bad coffee. Just to go somewhere and just go, I fancy coffee, and you get a coffee, and it's probably, objectively speaking, terrible, you just drink it and you're happy. I couldn't do that anymore. No, yeah, that's a good point, actually. I'm, I, if I'm not here or at home, I very rarely drink coffee. Anywhere else. Unless I know that the person who's made it and who's serving it kind of knows where it's from and how to best Prepare. brew it, then I just don't bother, I drink tea. But that's probably pretty bad for, uh, for tea connoisseurs as well. Yeah, it's a difficult water. It's a difficult one. I I generally um, don't like to be too harsh when I go places. Um, but I was saying, I was saying downstairs. I can't remember the last time I I I, I went to a, a coffee shop and and had a a coffee. Mm. Okay, it's just like you know our local Bedford Street. Or I always take friends there. Whoever come down and visit. Well, get off at Middlesbrough train station, we'll go have a coffee and we'll go hang out. Where do you, um, where did you go before Bedford Street existed? Where did you go, is that someone downstairs? We can, where, where did you go before, before Bedford Street was a thing? Hello? I didn't, I don't think. When did you get interested in coffee? That's the thing. When did you actually think, I'm gonna go out and search for places that serve decent coffee? I'm trying to think like the moment it was. Even when I first got an AeroPress. I can't remember when that was though. I think that was like a Christmas present ages ago. I, I was hovering on the stairs. <laughs> right, you're back. You didn't miss much. I didn't miss yeah, much. Apart from Bert's, you know, never eating cheese in his life. And, and having dry bread when I was little. I was saying basically that we, we got on to talking about developing tastes and how you got into coffee and what, when was your yeah. first time you ran. Because Guy said he had an AeroPress and then obviously he was like, what, did you, what was your first AeroPress coffee yet? Mm -hmm. and Spencer, single origin or whatever. And I just said, um, it interests me because with my mum and dad, we used to have the Nescafe Red Top, like the, the original Yeah, the classic, Nescafe. yeah. And then I was saying, like... Um, my mum is not a dairy fan, she never has been, and I've tried her with so many things, but she just, she's just not into it. So I never had cheese till I was like 16. So you can imagine what it was like when my world was opened up to cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? So, um, I think we should like introduce ourselves a little bit. Job, job roles, what we do, who we are, why we do it, and how the hell we, we ended up mm -hmm. sitting Drinking coffee, eating hummus, <laughs> and filming, filming a, a podcast. Joe Rogan, you better be shaking in your boots, mate, because <laughs> this is going to be the next thing. Um, right, go on, Guy, you go first. What's your, what, what's your name? Right. My name's Guy, I'm head roaster at Rotten Coffee. I, I develop the profiles, make the coffee taste good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> Depending <laughs> on what side of bed I get out of. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, work on them and, and improve them. If I'm lucky, I get a few bags to work with. If I'm not, I get a 30 kilo box. That like, <laughs> makes sure that tastes good. You only get six tries. <laughs> it usually works out. 
very rarely does it not work out, but I have a, a lot of help. And how did you get into, um, well, how, 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 yeah, how did you get into coffee? Why, why did you work, work for Routon Coffee? Um, well, I just, it was the only good coffee shop locally. Bedford so, Street. Yeah, Bedford Street. And that was, that was where Routon Coffee was to me when I was into coffee. And I just always bought the coffee from there. I'd pop in and have a coffee. And I'd always, that would be the place I would get coffee. And just one day you were there. And we just talked for a while. And my poor girlfriend at the time just sat in the corner, drank her. At the time, she's his wife now. So yeah. He hasn't moved on. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm lucky. <laughs> she sat there and just like, mm, he, likes, he likes to talk. But you, you just you chatted with passion. I was fascinated by it. You told me a few books, and I like I had one of them, and I bought another one. And then, Round Coffee was advertising for an apprentice roaster to sort of fill the slot as, as you guys were getting bigger. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked if I could I could trial the job if I could volunteer for the like for a week or so during the six weeks holiday because at the time I was a teaching assistant. So I had six weeks, and I thought a week in a roastery that'd be like that'd be amazing, um, just to sort of see the ins and out of it, try some coffee, and if the job isn't for me, no loss here. They haven't paid me anything, so no loss for them. They had a couple of like a spare, spare hand in there. They came back and said, yeah, yeah, let's do it, and I did the week, but the finances or like things weren't in place for me to be hired until about six months later. Um, and in November of about just gone two years, two years ago, the November just gone two years. So I've been with them two years and a few months now. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Full time employee and just grew, went from there. That's interesting. Also, um, guy always tells me when I do these videos that I need to like condense my my talking down. <laughs> that went on for quite some time, <laughs> but it. It's called editing, mate. It is called editing. <laughs> That's all worth it. But yeah, and I mean, we liked you, didn't we, from the offset? Mm. Well, I think I, I'm quite, I'm quite um, excited to know that I was maybe a, an influence in that. That's, yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's well, nice. just waiting to hear about me. That's nice to know. <laughs> I think you're more influential than you, than you think. An even influencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, You've been an influencer all this time. All this time, just didn't even know it. Yeah. Um, Thomas. Yes, Thomas, Thomas Keaveney. Uh, I am, I'm a bit of everything. It, my job kind of changes on any given day. Today I've just been in the roastery, so I've just been fulfilling orders. Tomorrow I'm doing kind of marketing type things, a bit of communication, social media, all that sort of fun stuff. Do a bit of training. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it, yeah. I mean, we all wear many hats, to be fair, but yeah, various, various different things. Um, and I kind of started out also thanks to you, I suppose. I used to work at a cafe just as a barista. I say just a barista. Um, and Dave would come in. And the nice thing about where I used to work is that we would have samples of different coffees, obviously roasted here. Um, and we'd get to cup them and sample them and, and decide what we were going to use as our house coffee uh, in the place I used to work at. And having sort of spoken to Dave a little bit and, you know, cooked a few coffees with him and seeing his passion and all that sort of stuff, I decided that I was going to commandeer the work phone, steal Dave's number, text him and say, have you got any jobs going? So I did. And he ignored me for about six weeks. I did, yeah, I did. He did. I ignored you because I didn't really know how to answer the text message. That's fair. And it turns out, actually, I was just a few days late in getting the job because they'd given it to him. <laughs> to a guy. <laughs> um, but Dave eventually came up to me and said, really sorry I've been ignoring you for six weeks. Um, reason being, I wanted to sort of talk to you in person. I think you'd be a good fit for the team. Um, but we've just taken someone on and give it a little while, something big will come up and as we grow, we'll find the space. And we did. And here we are. Here we are. I'm yeah. glad to have you. Yeah, thanks for ignoring me for so long. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those awkward things where you can't really convey what you need to yeah, yeah, uh, over a text <laughs> over a text message or it all worked out in the end. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, and that's great. And I'm just Dave Burt's, Roasty Burt's, the coffee kidder, like whatever you wanna call me. Um, hummus lover. 
That's a new one. <laughs> Hummus lover. Coffee lover. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I just love, I just love coffee. I just love what we do. I love like spending, like not, I think we're in a fortunate position we get to come to work and although it can be hectic and chaotic at times, we, we generally um, end up leaving at the end of the week thinking we're pretty fortunate in what we, what we do, mm -hmm. if we do get time to sit down like this, which is probably, ever this is quite good, isn't it? Cathartic. Mm. I haven't sat down for this long in ages. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's good, but I'm going to have to stop doing that. <laughs> um, and I think as this, as this thing goes on, I mean, it won't always be all three of us every time. It might be just two of us. We're probably going to have guest people to come on and sit down and eat hummus and drink coffee. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about coffee. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's more of engaging with the people that buy our coffee, um, who are enjoying our coffee. Like it's all, It always surprises me to think that there's possibly at any given time somebody out there in the world drinking a cup of coffee that we've been that we've that we've had a part of part of its journey, part yeah. of its journey you know what I mean mm. and that's that's exciting because we're we sort of we just we just do to who love coffee mm. yeah and want other people to to drink better coffee and understand why coffee is better or what, what what's available to them and, and I guess understand a bit more about us as as a company as well yeah like for sure because you can easily you know just go to someone's website buy a bag of coffee drink it have a great time and, and kind of think nothing else of it which is you know a totally legitimate way of buying and consuming coffee but I think we still do that now I think we still do yeah but it's nice to to kind of know what's going on behind the scenes a little bit and mm -hmm. you know talk to each other and, and people know a little bit more about us and like you said, get get other people in who are involved in, in what we do and Yeah, yeah, to totally see the bigger picture a little bit. Yeah, yeah. totally. And um and I think having like a, a connection with your with your customer base or whatever is good because it, it isn't always about people telling us how great our coffee is. It's like like if we if if a batch wasn't right or if it wasn't to somebody's taste, it's like give us that feedback as well because Definitely. We want to get better. I'm begging for bad feedback in like. <laughs> yeah, don't don't wish for that too. No, much. no, as in constructive feedback. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I've sent samples out to a few places, and I'm like, is there anything that you can detect that's wrong with it? Because not only is it someone else's palate, it's someone else's war. Mm -hmm. So knowing what our coffee tastes like in Manchester will be useful. What's not coffee? What's not coffee related that we could maybe just finish on? Yeah, what we should do every week is we should, or every month, whenever we do this, we should, um, like, I want recommendations for, for like, sour, like good, good sourdough breads. Like, where, yeah. where do you, you, mm. get your bread from? Because um, I'd like to try it. Send it, P.O. Box. <laughs> three, <laughs> six, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm interested to know where, where people get the, the breads from because... I want to try as much as possible, and then obviously we can, we should talk about where the where the breads come from, the hummus. I'm going to make, make our own hummus. make our own hummus again. We were just mentioning that before. Yeah. Weren't we? Um. Well, we, I still think the caramelised onion damn. one is better than the original. Um, I know you. We need to have a hummus off. You, dis <laughs> you disagree with really. me, don't you? What do you mean, like other people trying this versus that? No, like bringing our own. And doing oh, like we've a... done that a little bit, I think. Um... On camera. Oh. Yeah, like a blind hummus tasting, like we did. Oh, yeah, because we could all make it, bring it in, and then line it up, and then have a dip of each, and then pick our favourite. I think I've been making my own hummus now for like... What? Nearly 20 years. Now. How regularly do you make hummus and not bring it in? Oh, like... At least once a week. Oh, what? Tom, yeah, Tom's going to make a... Tom's Double your batch size. Start bringing that in and take some money out the, the kitchen. Tom's in the process of writing a, a recipe book, I, I think. Mm. I've got a little notebook, a little bit like the one that I have downstairs when we're in production. Mm. And any time I make something for the first time, I'll 
write it down. I still need to give you that recipe for the rhubarb dal. Yes, because that was delicious. Yeah. Rhubarb really. dal? Yeah, it yeah. was very good. Wow. Just make it a like standard dal, but with, it was a bit more kind of aromatic. It had a lot of like coriander and what else was in it? A bit of caraway, various other bits and pieces. Sorry. And then you just get some, no, there was no anise in there. Two sticks of rhubarb, I just stick it in there. It goes all stringy, but it's got that kind of tart, like malic yeah, yeah, yeah. thing going. It was lovely. Oh, nice. If I do yeah. say so myself. Like, yeah, Where was I when this happened? I don't know. I think I've still got some Influencing. <laughs> Influencing, I doubt it. <laughs> but yeah, little book. And I just, if I'm doing something for the first time, just mm -hmm. write it down. But I've got a little, probably Rupert. got a little binder going. Of, of I think this is going to evolve. I think it is, it's it's going to start off as hummus and coffee and it's going to evolve into... To I think you should still call it hummus and coffee. Yeah, yeah, we should <laughs> always. Coffee and hummus. Uh, right. Outtakes. I yeah. think that's it. Yeah? Yeah. First episode of Coffee and Hummus. I hope we right, we hope you enjoy it. Um let us know if you don't. I'm always interested in comment when, below. When, when people don't, yeah, comment below. Tom's gonna put a whatever on there for, <laughs> to block out my face. <laughs> to to get into the playlist of coffee and hummus. Um but that's it, that's us, that's us three. Thank you very much. Can I do the thing? You can do the thing. Stay focused. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. As always, stay focused. Eat delicious hummus and drink delicious coffee. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>